Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Yesterday, I had a classic thing happen. This show is a daily show, right? Six out of the seven days of the week, there is an AI Daily Brief talking to you about the latest AI news and discourse. And you would think that daily is a frequent enough cadence to actually capture and be up to date with all the news. Alas, sometimes even that isn't enough. And yesterday we had one of those situations where the headlines part of the episode talked about how it appeared that Operator would be coming this week. And between the time that I finished recording and when it was actually published, Operator had come out. I had a feeling as I was recording that that was going to happen. But in any case, that means that today we get to actually look at Operator, which is, of course, OpenAI's first true or at least advertised to be true agent project. They call it an agent that can use its own browser to perform tasks for you. So let's find out what it is, and then we're going to talk through seven ways that people are using it already. Operator has been long in the making. Indeed, even as recently as a couple of weeks ago, there were news articles coming out that said that we're exploring things like why OpenAI hadn't released an agent yet. Their announcement post describes Operator as an agent that can go to the web to perform tasks for you. Interestingly, it uses its own browser. And with that browser, it can look at a web page, interact with it through typing, clicking, or scrolling. OpenAI is to some extent planning a flag here around what an agent is, referring to them as AIs capable of doing work for you independently. You give it a task and it will execute. They suggest that this research preview version of Operator is good at repetitive browser tasks such as filling out forms, ordering groceries, and creating memes. Now, in terms of how it actually works, there is some similarity to the way that Anthropic's computer use mode is designed. The agent takes constant screenshots to see what it's doing in the web browser and can take control using the mouse and keyboard. Unlike Anthropic, though, OpenAI has implemented this as a fully remote setup. After receiving instructions, Operator opens its own virtual browser window in a cloud instance. You can watch it carry out its task, or you can click away and get on with other work while Operator works in the background. Users retain full control of their computer with Operator running in its own fully contained browser. This, of course, limits the specific things that it can do, but it also makes it more usable at the same time. OpenAI has worked with specific major websites like StubHub, DoorDash, and OpenTable to try to improve and smooth out the integration but theoretically, Operator can access any website that it needs to carry out its task. There is a lot of human in the loop here as well. OpenAI writes, If Operator encounters challenges or makes mistakes, it can leverage its reasoning capabilities to self-correct. When it gets stuck and needs assistance, it simply hands control back to the user, ensuring a smooth and collaborative experience. Indeed, in addition to helping Operator deal with certain types of issues, taking over is also required to finalize certain tasks. For example, this version of Operator does not have access to credit card details, so if that's part of completing the task, it hands the system back over to the user to complete that particular step. Operator also asks for feedback at critical moments within its tasks. Under the hood, OpenAI has fine-tuned a version of GPT-40 to drive Operator, which they're calling their computer using agent, or KUA. As far as benchmarks go, KUA achieved an 87% success rate on Web Voyager, which is a live website navigation test and a 58.1% success rate on Web Arena, which simulates e-commerce and content management situations. Much better than vanilla GPT-40, but certainly not necessarily the level of reliability we'd want before these types of experiences become endemic. Speaking of which, as VentureBeat points out, TikTok parent ByteDance also launched its own AI agent for controlling web browsers yesterday, called UITARS. They write it's totally open source and boasts similarly impressive benchmark performance, which makes them wonder if people will be willing to pay for ChatGPT Pro's $200 a month, which is the only way that you can get access to Operator at the moment. As has been the custom with OpenAI releases lately, the feature is only available to US Pro users, with Sam Altman saying that Europe will unfortunately take a while. So let's talk now about some of the ways that people are actually using Operator. Keep in mind, these are all very nascent, first test kind of use cases, And it always inevitably takes some time to really figure out the best ways to use any new capabilities like Operator offers. Certainly when it comes to how OpenAI was positioning this, it's a lot of the very basic assistant tasks that I've often on the show said I don't think are going to be the real drivers of agent behavior when it comes to consumers. Ultimately, whether I'm right and these aren't the long-term drivers of agentic behavior, or I'm wrong and this is exactly what people end up wanting to use agents for, it's clear that they're valuable as a test case and as a way to start training and giving agents capabilities. The first use case that many people shared was some version of grocery shopping. This was one of the examples, in fact, that the OpenAI team used to demonstrate operators' capabilities. They gave it a shopping list written down on a piece of paper, says, can you buy these for me, please? An operator goes, brings the list to Instacart, and after it's found the items and added them to the cart, asks whether it should finalize the order. In a week when crypto has been booming, it's appropriate that another experimental use case, this one from Rowan Chung, who of course runs the rundown, is crypto investment research based on tokens that are actually worth looking into. 
Obviously, you could generalize this use case as research. The reason that I thought this example was interesting to share was that it demonstrates one part of the human agent interface. At one point, operator got hit with an RU human captcha and pinged Rowan to take control again to confirm and move forward. Number three, and another very common demonstration use case, and once again, one that I've railed on before, is travel planning. Y Combinator president Gary Tan writes, OpenAI operator is very impressive, planning an impromptu trip to Vegas. It's able to navigate JSX's website and handle unusual cases and basically figured out sold out scenarios, change dates and times, and now it's figuring out where to eat for Friday night for two. I will say that when it comes to this type of assistant use case, the more complex the travel is, in other words, the more details that need to be solved, the more I can see this particular type of interface, which just chatters at you to get the information it needs to execute, being an actually useful update. A fourth use case, this one once again from Rowan, researching a good birthday gift for my mom based on what she likes. A couple things that were interesting about this experiment. First of all, there were certain times and websites that it couldn't access, and it was capable of switching gears and finding another site that would do something similar. It also, in addition to looking for specific items, took it a step farther and actually helped compare and find the best price across the web. Number five, staying on the theme of rote regular tasks. A16Z partner Olivia Moore says, I just gave operator a picture of a paper bill I got in the mail. From only the bill picture, it navigated to the website, pulled up my account, entered my info, and asked for my credit card number to complete payment. Once again, you see here that it's not going to take that final step of actually inputting the credit card number without human approval. Although presumably in the long run, that might be something that people get more comfortable with actually allowing and various agent assistants actually enable as well. Sixth use case, and this is I think where it gets a little bit more interesting from a business standpoint, is actually using the tool for sales. This comes from Pocketflow AI's Helena Zhang, and let's just listen to the 30 seconds of what she did. Hi, here's a list of powerful women at companies we would love to work with, and I want to reach out to their head of AI with such a message. So I have prompted operator and talking to the operator. This is just so cool. So basically what operator did here was take a list of names, find their LinkedIn profiles, and add a message to connection requests, effectively doing prospecting. Lastly, our seventh use case, and again, I saw a number of different examples of this, was using the agent to build apps. Baby AGI creator and VC Yohei writes, I used OpenAI Operator to build, deploy, and open source a tool on GitHub using Replit Agent. It took about 30 minutes. He also gave some feedback, writing, While working with Replit Agent, it actually deployed the app, tested it, and described the error back to Replit Agent for me. Operator asked me a few more questions that I wanted, but it was mostly for safety, e.g. filling forms, so I guess okay with it. It had trouble with a few things around UI, like knowing it needs to scroll a page to see the rest of it, and it needed pointers to find the Git feature in Replit. Once it found the Git feature, it didn't need my assistance to create a repo and open source after having the agent write a readme. While a bit slower, this was even more automated than Replit Agent, especially testing features and working through errors, which is impressive. The app that Yohei built, by the way, was, quote, the classic to-do app with a twist. It's for agents. API for agent to create, read, update, delete tasks. User web UI for manually managing tasks. Test UI for testing endpoints and API performance metrics. Kishan also made an app, sharing a video and tweeting, Use ChatGPT operator to use Bolt to create a project management app, a general agent using a coding agent, and it worked pretty well. I even deployed the app. This is insane. So basically, we had here exactly as he described this general agent, which is operator, using the specific Bolt agent, which is a web coding agent, to create something, and it worked. When you see things like this, which open up fundamentally new possibilities and things that were never possible before, that's why I'm more skeptical of the very basic, superficial, do my grocery shopping for me type of tasks. Sure, it could be that assistants get so good at those things that it's not even worth a tiny handful of minutes that it used to take to do them. But certainly what gets me excited and what I think is going to drive more uptake are these never before possible things like building complete applications in this way. Ultimately, the way that I would describe people's general attitudes towards this is that while it isn't a lightning bolt chat GPT style of moment, operator is just good. It's not great at everything yet. It has some challenges, but it's definitely a preview of the future and where we're headed. I anticipate over the next few weeks, we are going to see a ton of different use cases thrown at this thing, and probably some that start to take off as really and regularly valuable. I will, of course, be back here to share those with you as they happen. But for now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. And until next time, peace.